Hello boxing fans, right now I just want to talk about probably the worst uh, stoppage that I've ever seen in history and this was in the Oval McKenzie versus Enzo Macronelli fight and hopefully this will be the last we see of Ian John Lewis I mean this guy's been slipping for a while now since the Shannon Briggs versus Vitaly Klitschko fight you know he's a shell of a man this, this <laughs> um, Ian John Lewis you know usually it's the fight he gets beat who becomes a shell of a man this time you know, Ian John Lewis is the one who's got real demons, you know, but I talk about people like Lucien Boutte and Ricky Hatton having demons, Ian John Lewis has got demons and they're getting the better of him in the boxing ring. I'll give you a quick round by round, you know. I actually thought this was a really, really um, competitive fight as it, as it wore on. I actually did predict Oliver McKenzie to win by KO in rounds three or four. I put some good money on the first four rounds, then I put money on the rounds two and just one in one as well I put some good money on this and I won some money so I was quite happy with that but it was dirty money you know that's all I can say about it Orville McKenzie yeah, he got round one I give it to him he outworked Enzo you know he attempted to bully Enzo from pillar to post but it was competitive you know he tried to throw the right hand he was looking for that right hand constantly he looked very one dimensional to me and basically you know, Enzo did a good job of just throwing the jab, trying to tie him up on the inside. He threw a good few uppercuts on the inside as well. You know, he made he made Oval really think about what he was going to do at some point. You know, Oval did look like he was, you know, trying to work his way in, trying to think how he's going to get around Enzo. But Enzo's guard was high. He was quite good. You know, he didn't look like the usual guy that was just been getting knocked the fuck out every time we've seen him fight. Uh, obviously, the referee had to separate them at numerous times. You know. And the, when he kept it at distance, you know, or moved them out of distance, Enzo Macronelli liked it the most. He was able to get his jabs off. And I could see that there was going to be, you know, a good chance that Enzo at 9-1 to one to win a unanimous decision, by the way. 9-1, to one, yeah. There was a good chance he was going to win. You know, if he gets past the first four rounds, there's a good chance. Uh, round two, Enzo started very well. He was landing a good jab, very consistent. He was trying to work off it too. He was very good at throwing in those body shots. I like Enzo for that. That's one of the things that I wish people would look at, you know, pre hay because he's always been decent at that body shot. He's always been good at rearranging your rib cage, and he tried to do it here too. And in times, he didn't look like Oval liked it. You know, he didn't like it himself. He was. He thought he was going to be able to bully this guy easily, and he was going to get, you know, free access on that chin. And that really wasn't the case. Like I said, he only landed one right hand in this fight. And it's. It sounds funny because usually when you say something like that. You think Enzo Marconelli, that right hand, ended the fight. And it did end the fight, but it really shouldn't have ended the fight. You know, Enzo got caught on the ropes for an extended amount of time. And this was the only time in this round that uh, Oval actually took control and he looked like he was going to win just the round at this point. Um, Oval obviously wanted to land the right hand. He tried to work in a left, but there was nothing, nothing to it. He landed the right hand, one clean right hand. He snapped his head back, but... He was straight away, he got his head straight back. His legs were totally good. You know what Enzo's like. His legs turn to jelly. He always hits the deck. Just off a littlest punch. The fact that he was, he had a guard there. He was moving his body weight to, you know, take the pop out of the punches. It's shown that he, he had a real plan in there. And it was cut short by, basically by Ian John Lewis, you know. Ian John Lewis stalked over a while. A lot of these shots, yeah, there was like six or seven shots that this guy threw. And you know when... Um, What's a good example to think of, you know, Rios versus um, Alvarado, yeah? Alvarado took like four, five, six, seven, eight, and got up to, I think, eight shots, you know, unanswered, yeah? That wasn't the case in this fight at all. If that was the case, I would have been, yeah, stop the fight. Didn't That wasn't the case. It was one, two, three, ooh, good shot, four, five, all blocked, one good shot, and the referee stalked over. And he, he just got between them both. And, I, and everyone was like, what are you doing, referee? You know, Enzo looked at the referee with the expression on his face like, what the fuck are you doing? Oval looked at the ref like, what the fuck are you doing? And the referee stood there in between both of these huge guys who were staring him out going, oh, what the fuck have I done? And then he was trying to like, sort of like say, you're hurt. And he was like, I'm fucking not, mate. And he was like, oh, shit, he's not it. I've got to stop you. I'm sorry. And he was like, why, you know, basically Ian John Lewis really fucked it up. He had Enzo's chin on his mind. He shouldn't have. Both these guys should get in the ring on a fair playing field. You know, this is boxing. This ain't ballet, yeah? 
you're getting in the ring to get punched in the face. It's it's one of the things that's going to happen. You jump into the sea, you're going to get fucking wet. You know, if he and John Lewis, yeah, probably the worst stoppage I've seen. The way I, the only other way I can um, I can say I can say this, explain it for you would be. Ian John Lewis, if he was a lifeguard, he would have dived into the pool to save Tom Daly from drowning at the Olympics. It was one of the worst refereeing decisions I've ever seen in my life. You know, and he knew it himself. He really knew it himself. Afterwards, he tried. He can't explain it. It was just one of those things. So he really fucked it up. You know, that's all I can say about that. But hopefully, we're gonna, you know, get the rematch. No one can say that Oval McEntee was gonna win it that round. You know, the round after, or the round after. It, it holds no validity, you know, to me. In terms of science, yeah, you know, Schrodinger's cat, the Big Bang Theory, right? We can't prove what was going to happen, you know. It has the exact same amount of validity as everything else. You know, Enzo could have won by knockout, or so could have Oval. In each round, or they both could have won a unanimous decision. It doesn't matter. All we know is, Ian John Lewis meffed it all up. So, we've got to get that rematch on. One of the things that I'm, I'm really pissed off about is, you know, the, the people who went to watch that fight. You see, when I buy tickets, I take another person with me who's big up on the boxing, yeah? And then there's two or three other people who are like, they want to come, we're going out for drinks afterwards. You know, they're not die-hard boxing fans. They're, they don't mind boxing, but they're... What they are doing is, they're seeing what I like, yeah? Now, when I showed them a fight like this... They'll look at that fight and think, this is a load of shit. How can you like that? And they'll never come again. They'll never put their money into boxing. Never put their time into it. And basically, boxing loses because of Ian John Lewis. We've got to stop. We've got to stamp that shit out because boxing needs as many fans as possible. You know, in the, we're actually quite lucky over here in the UK because we actually do get some decent uh, numbers to fight. Different places have, di you know, really vary. Ian John Lewis can't be dealing with, can't be doing that. I mean, he's... He's got to think of either retiring or, you know, he's got to get retrained or something because ever since that Vitaly versus Shannon Briggs fight, he's been he's been the shell of a man that he used to be. Anyway, would you like to see the rematch of this fight?